Hello, welcome to the Satellite Marketcast podcast, where we feature key executives from leading satellite companies worldwide, talk about their company, their careers, industry trends, and other insights on the exciting satellite communication industry. I'm your host, Virgil Labrador, Editor-in-Chief of Satellite Markets and Research, inviting you to another informative podcast with our featured guest today. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, Global Pandemic Edition of the Satellite Marketcast podcast. Uh, my name is Virgil Labrador, Editor-in-Chief of Satellite Markets and Research, and our guest today is, is Lou Dubin. He's the Senior Vice President of Product Marketing for Comtech EF Data. It's a very well-known company. Uh, the company has grown over the years and uh, it, uh, it's figured in the news uh, recently for um, uh, many uh, acquisitions that it had. And Lou actually came from one of the companies that it acquired many years ago and here to talk about that uh, is Lou. So Lou, welcome to this uh, podcast. Thank you very much for having me, Virgil. I realized it took a pandemic for 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 us to get together, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, or, or you, if you look at it in another way, you know, even a pandemic couldn't keep us from each other. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a better, that's a better way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, it's always a pleasure. I see Lou uh, in the shows uh, all the time. And, uh, and as you know, like I said, Comtech is in the news. We follow the, that company very closely. So Lou... Uh, like I said, Comtech has been in the news. You, you, you've had some major acquisitions. Some are still pending, uh, but but some of them uh, just uh, like uh, uh, UHP, uh, etc. Uh, and and you coming from a company that was acquired by uh, uh, Comtech. Many how was that? Two thousand seven? Two thousand? Yeah, ex- exactly. It was uh, it was the two thousand uh, two thousand seven two thousand eight kind of ran a couple of. A, a, a course of a couple of years in terms of the time it took to complete the acquisition and um yeah i was uh i was the president of radar at the time and uh, comtech was our really was our biggest competitor um but they wanted uh they they wanted a lot of the engineering and and um technology um customers uh and you know ex- and expand into the satellite community become a bigger part of the satellite community which is which is really kind of still in line with with the current situation and, and why we've shown so much interest in the acquisitions that Comtech is going down the road with. So mm-hmm. um, we recently completed an acquisition of a company called CGC. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a manufacturer of XY antennas. Mm-hmm. Um, we had an antenna company really a very long time ago, and you know we see a lot of movement in the satellite leo and, and and meo community and these xy antennas are, are really important so mm-hmm. um comtech telecommunications the parent company um saw real value in that um as they see value in continuing to grow the uh digital segment of our business so um you know a major investment in 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 uhp the universal uh, uh hardware platform yeah um and uh their their sister company eStar and uh and galat um, so I think it shows that Comtech Telecommunications is, is, is really all in in satellite. And it's really exciting to be right. part of an organization that's investing in a satellite. So as Senior Vice President for Product Management, do you manage all the products, all the different product lines? So I manage all of the digital products mm-hmm. for the Comtech EF Data Division. So right. there's, there's quite a few products, and, and I know about 2% of all of them. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah, it's a pretty extensive portfolio of products you've got, right? Yeah. Talk yeah, about the, yeah. Sh- showcase uh, the the products that you're you're really pushing in the market right now. So um, we have uh, quite a few different digital products um, and RF products. Um, the digital products that are really showing a lot of success um, are 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 high speed and high throughput um, point to point or point to multi-point products um, such as the CDM 760 or the the government centric CDM 5650. Um, A lot of interest in our VSAT system, uh, our Heights platform Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of interest really in a mix of these types of technologies and a lot of networks where we now have the ability to, to kind of give you the right tool for the right job. Mm-hmm. Um, and so a lot of these jobs that come out, they're really, 
they're really not very vanilla. It's not an even spread of what they want. They need different solutions for different parts of the network, and, and we're lucky enough to have a lot of those tools. Mm -hmm. And uh, what applications uh, do you see the most promise for your products right now? So we're still very much, very much entrenched in uh, two major markets. Um, uh, our, our two biggest markets are, are definitely uh, – government and defense, um, both for the U.S. and international, mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, mobility operators or, or, or cellular providers. Mm -hmm. um, those two markets uh, really define, for the most part, um, who we are, what technologies we want to invest in. Um, now, I wouldn't call it a market necessarily, but uh, you know, a, a growing factor in all of this is, is the satellite operators themselves. Right. And how, you know, the how the market is changing from the perspective of um, frequency reuse and uh, ability or inability to go through standardized gateways or localized gateways. Um, not not only government or cell backhaul or uh, mobile network operators, but the satellite operators themselves uh, are really driving a lot of change in the technology just because of the way the geo satellites function, even the geo satellites are functioning differently, have different kinds of transponders, different frequencies, different throughput capabilities. Uh, certainly the MEO operators and, and, uh, and uh, the MEO constellations um, now not only owned by necessarily one company, right? There's, there's others that are applying for MEO, for MEO constellations and, and the LEO providers. So they're changing, they're changing the, environment enough where we can't just be customer centric we also have to be operator centric right right so you see an opportunity in the new leos and the leos uh, constellations that are coming up yeah you know um we do we we do see opportunities we're involved with a lot of these um organizations and and and, and operators and you know some are more open than others. Some are are, are what, what we call closed network or kind of wanting to, um, you know, they want to be the sole provider from top to bottom of the food chain, kind of like an Apple, right? Right. Then you have the Android players, the uh, the guys who who are willing to hire or or work through service providers, and and they want equipment from various manufacturers so that they can offer maybe a, a wider array of solutions, albeit not as tied together right right now uh Lou, you know we're in the midst of a global pandemic so uh how has that affected your company and how do you see your company uh you know uh emerging out of this um so yeah so the, yeah the pandemic um it's one of the strangest things right our business the satellite community is usually pretty resilient to um, wars or uh, or events that that you know even could be large in scale, but generally speaking, are centralized in one location, right? right. Our, our industry is and no industry in recent years, but our industry is so resilient. It is so hard to believe that something could be so big mm -hmm. that it could impact our industry, and, it, and this clearly has. Right. So, um, you know, we have. Uh, uh, We've tried to adapt as, as every company has. Um, funny stuff, funny true story. We, we you know we we want to uh, we want to make our sales numbers and bookings numbers like any other company, and um, we really were counting on a particular order uh, to come through. And um, uh, this particular order was in uh, was in India, and uh, they couldn't get the, the, the India contracts can take quite a few signatures for anybody who's been working with India. In India, they would know. Um, and um, to facilitate the order, we had a gentleman on a uh, on a moped go from home to home <laughs> and, facilitate, and facilitate the signing of the good old fashioned the, uh, you know, bicycling the contract, right? So and you know to, to distribute the movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. to answer your question, you know, we're 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 making the necessary yeah, changes. Yeah, it looks like you're you're uh, adapting to it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and yeah. Lou, you know, uh, we started in the industry almost the same time, and uh, and and you've been through a lot of other, and you were a, a senior executive at 
the at Raydine and all that, and you've been through the other results. How do you how do you see this look dif uh, different from the others? Th this um, the global situation or the, the pandemic? Well, the crisis uh, emerged. Uh, how the uh, you know, the industry will recover eventually from this crisis? Oh, oh, I see. Um, well, you know, sadly, I, I think. What I've seen so far is the, is part of the way to recovery is is um, really controlling costs for quite a while, right? And uh, so no one likes to talk about that side of the business, but it's a real it's a real side of the business, and mm -hmm. we have to control costs. Um, luckily, our travel budget is way down. <laughs> <laughs> however, <laughs> however, we've but we've had to. I'm sure your telephone to go. costs are a lot higher. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. But those are those are our customers. So that's the that's like paying yourself on the four hundred one k. Right, right, right. <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, we we have had to slow things down. We've had to take um, days off. We've had to uh, you know control expenses, like like I'm sure most have. Mm -hmm. And I think the recovery is you know every I I would hope everyone would think the recovery is going to happen. We, we think it's going to take a long time. I think mm -hmm. most people think it's going to take a long time. And so we really cost controlled very early. Mm -hmm. And we have the ability at this point to run for quite a while with, with the cost controls we put in place up front. Mm -hmm. And as, as business recovers, um, you know, so too will, uh, will we begin um, again expanding uh, resources and and and, all, and and marketing and and r d expenditures and all those things that you have to you have to look at when when you're in a situation like this right so apart from like you know the, the changes that you have to put in place in terms of you know uh, yeah. operations and etc do you see any change in demands for your products do you see any shift or is there any market that you see that's emerging out of this well, so certainly there, there has, so the, you, you, you hit upon a really good point and, and, and th there is a huge demand for products now. Um, and, you know, w w w the demand for the government business really is, is almost um, uh, unchanged, uh, at least in our view. Um, and the demand for commercial products is, is huge. You know, these M&O operators, their, their networks are completely overloaded and so you have there's this weird balance of the mno operators have this enormous demand they they really want new products new services extended products mm -hmm. um and then it, you get to the point where but someone has to install it someone has to commission it someone has to physically be involved and there's a little bit of uh, back and forth on that right so you have all this demand but there's only so fast you can go with the fact that people still have to be involved in real life business. It's, we, you know, you can sell stuff on paper all day long. At the end of the day, right, a bunch of people have to get involved to make it work. Right, right. So, how 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 do you see uh, your company now moving forward? You know, just 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 what can we expect from Comtech? You know. So I, th I think, you know, we're, as you mentioned earlier, we're in the midst of um, a, a very different world. However, we're still firmly committed to growing the business in the SATCOM industry. Mm -hmm. um, these, we have two very exciting uh, mergers that are in the works right now with, with UHP and Galat. Mm -hmm. And um, we really can't wait to close on these deals and start kind of integrating these systems and taking best of breed and, and ha expanding our portfolio. Uh, UHP has um, a, a really a wonderful product that addresses a portion of the market that, that Comtech has historically almost intentionally not tried to target, which is, mm -hmm. um, you know, the lower cost VSAT, the SCADA network, SCADA platforms, um, highly oversubscribed networks. I mean, we've always tried to stay historically where our strength was, which was high speed, high capacity, high throughput, uh, high reliability. Um, and uh, UHP really opens up a, a whole new market for us, as does, does you know, Galat. Galat has a lot of business in the, in the um, flight entertainment um, world. Um, 
Our sister division, Zycom, does a lot of work in the flight entertainment world. But in terms of digital products, um, you know, uh, we have not focused on flight historically, and 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 Galat has a really good portfolio of, of flight of flight rated and flight certified products. Right, right. So that's that's to look forward to. Huh? Yeah, you know, and I I know that uh, the airline industry is hit, but some would tell you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most difficult things about dealing with the airline industry is installs, and I, I can't think of a better time to be doing installs. <laughs> right. Well, thank you very much, Lou. I think that's a very good uh, overview of where your company stands right now. Uh, so this is a company that we are always uh, following very closely, uh, Comtech EF the Data. Uh, so all your listeners out there, thank you for listening to this uh, podcast. And... Uh, for all the news and information in the global satellite industry, you always have satellite markets and research at www.satellitemarkets.com. And this podcast is also available on our YouTube channel, which is Satellite Markets. Thank you.